Hey everyone, uh, Edward O'Daniel again here. I uh, was trying to do, well I haven't been live, I just kind of finished up one live, but um, I this is about something different here. I wanted to share a different topic because I'm all about sharing. These are just some of the things, uh, this, th these uh, projects are the reason why I haven't been going live here lately. We've been swamped with, uh, with projects and uh, my kids are out of school and we're running them around and well, those parents out there, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, right now we've got a project that we closed on a couple weeks ago in South St. Louis City. And South, sorry, South St. Louis City has some beautiful, just large brick buildings that were built back in the turn of, you know, uh, 100 years ago. I mean, we've got some old buildings here and these buildings are beautiful. I mean, they're meant to last like a lifetime. But it's just a shame how some of these buildings have just degraded. People have ignored them. They've left them vacant, which have caused uh, other damage and so forth to it. And um, I actually grew up in South St. Louis City. Not a lot of people probably know that about me, but I grew up in South St. Louis City. So I remember these buildings. And I've been in these buildings that have been renovated, and they're beautiful. I mean, they're absolutely beautiful when they're brought back. And uh, that's what we're going to do to this duplex project that we bought. However, we have a problem. The problem that we have is this uh, duplex is condemned. The city actually condemned it. Now, this is one of the things I didn't, uh, like this was several years ago, I just kind of thought that a building that was condemned was somehow structurally defective. It was, uh, it just was non-repairable. The city condemned it as a safety, uh, safety factor and that uh, basically it just needs to be torn down. That's what, what I thought several years ago until I started uh, learning about uh, condemned buildings and so forth. But actually I found out that uh, municipalities and cities condemn buildings just to make sure that nobody has the right to live there. That's really what I found out is the sense of it. Now they do condemn stuff structurally for, you know, for damages. Like the house that we bought actually had a fire in it. And that was the reason why it was condemned because it had a small fire in one of the front rooms. And uh, some of the, 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 ceiling rafters got charred. I mean, they're in good shape, but I still have to, um, I'll talk about what the, what the city is going to make us do for that. But how, my point is, how do you find these old buildings that are condemned? Now, if they're condemned, for the most part, you're going to be able to get a really good price for these because not everybody knows how to take a building out of condemnation. And it does take extra work. It does take extra money. Um, to get this stuff done. So, I mean, you should be able to negotiate a much better price. So it's not like you can just buy the building, go in and start working on it. It doesn't work that way. Please don't do that. If the city or municipality find, uh, finds you working on a building that's been condemned, they'll post a stop work order. You'll be fined. It won't be pretty. And uh, they'll make you pay. They'll make you pay and might make it a little bit harder on you to get your permits. Anyway, uh, one of the things I found out is I'm um, here in the city. You actually, if a building's been condemned, then you have to bring in uh, basically an architect. I had to hire an architect here to come in, look at the building. The architect would then draw up the plans for what, and sometimes it's a structural engineer, believe it or not. Sometimes you might, if the building is that bad, you might need to get a structural engineer in there to get plans. But this wasn't structural. It was merely uh, cosmetic. So in that kind of case, an architect can come in. So first of all, you have to hire an architect. The architect then has to come in, look at it, evaluate the damage to the building, the fire damage or whatever damage. It could be water damage uh, for all, you, all we know. But they evaluate it, determine based upon the current codes what needs to be done. Then they'll have to draw up the appropriate blueprint prints. Goodness, I cannot talk today. Blueprint plans. <laughs> Say that three times real fast. But um, they'll drop the plans, and then once they drop the plans, then you have to take them down to the city's office. And, of course, the city has a guy. that That's just what they do all day, just sit back and look at everybody's plans. So I sat back and had to spend, it, it sucked. It was about an hour and 20 minutes sitting in a chair because everybody brought their blueprint plans down at the same time. There was a guy there that wanted to put on a deck. There was another guy that wanted to put on a deck and another guy that was putting on a patio and just like, goodness. And I mean, all these things have to be approved 
Um, even if you put this stuff on your own home, you know, you have to have these plans approved. But for me, in order to get a work permit, which I had to get a permit to uh, be established on this building in order for us to do work on it, because once you get that permit, then the city understands that you have gone through the, per, uh, the, the process of all the construction plans and the city has looked at it. They've confirmed that the plan is good. It meets code and so forth. So I had to take these uh, blue. I mean, it's not very difficult. You just hire an architect, take it down to the city. They're going to charge you um, charge you some fees. Uh, most most permits are based upon the amount of work that you do. So this one right here, I'm estimating, is probably going to be around sixty or sixty five thousand for this particular rehab. But um, so they just charge you a percentage of that, and then that's what you pay. You pay your permit fee, and then they give you the, your little permits to post up on the board. And now any of the inspectors that go by know that you've uh, you've passed a permit. But one of the things that people just don't get is uh, I know a lot of the rehabbers, they don't like to deal with condemned buildings. One of the things they'll check is before they go and uh, make an offer on a property, they'll go check and call the city's office to see if that building has been condemned. And if it is, they just they won't even bother going in there. Now, this is one of the things if you've ever rehabbed a house. I mean, I don't, I've don't. i handled houses that have had uh, structural issues before. I mean, I haven't done like a ton of structural issues. But I mean, if the house just needs to be leveled, if it you know needs some piers, if it needs to be supported, I'm all for that. I can handle that. I'm just not not big at like lifting a house up and repouring the foundation, setting it back down. I've never done something like that. Um, it would take a hell of a profit on a rehab for me to want to do something like that. But um, any problem that you have can be solved with just a check and just some time. I mean, you could write a check and make that problem go away as long as you can get it cheap enough. So that's cool. We got this property pretty cheap, um, which I'm happy about. And I'm debating. I mean, right now we're looking to just uh, get it all fixed up, renovating it. But anyway, I'm getting off topic, guys. This just goes back to having a condemned building. Once you have a condemned building, how do you take that and then be able to get it to a point where your contractor can then begin working on it? So it's just as simple as that. Go hire an architect or a structural engineer. They have to evaluate the building. They have to look at everything uh, that's on the building. They'll have to create the plans. Once they create those plans, you just simply take that down to the city's um, office, planning office, uh, to review that they'll review it they'll make sure that everything looks good and then they will stamp that you can go and get your uh, permit and walk out the door the one thing that you need to make sure that you do is just make sure your scope of work like right now we've got a normal scope of work for this particular project you know we're going to be doing obviously the fire damage unit it's going to take a lot of uh, you know fresh plastering and so forth and new flooring stuff like that that we don't have to do on it on the other unit but one of the things you have to configure is inside of the plans the architect gives you, there are additional to-dos that you're going to have to do in there. So just make sure that you give that uh, those architect plans to your contractor as well and make sure that they, they add all of that work that's required to bring that up to code. Like with a uh, fire damage, uh, if uh, we're going to have to... to basically cistern you know put another board up, up along the uh the rafters and do a few other things but i need to include that in my bid make sure that just because you get the plans down there that's not it you know you have to make sure that you that uh, you do everything that's in the plans otherwise um, when the city inspector comes down they will fail it i mean they will fail it and, and you'll have to get that fixed before you can move forward so before we can uh, put all the plastering back up and redo the walls and everything like that they're gonna have to come take a look at the work that's been done behind the scenes before we do that that just makes sense, right? So anyway, it's, it's a lot easier than I thought uh, for doing that. This is like just one of our first condemned buildings, but I'm just kind of tired of letting these uh, sweet deals go by and it just takes a little bit of extra work. And just because I'm going through this particular process, I just want to make sure I share that with everybody in case you want to do it, that it's a fairly straightforward and easy process. Me, I had to sit back and, and ask several people. It's uh, it's. It's good that St. Louis, I've got a good network of people that I can call and ask that have experience that's willing to take my phone call and spend a few minutes, just like I'm willing to spend a few minutes with people who are in my network as well. So, guys, if I, if you're here in St. Louis, whatever, hit me up on Facebook, send me a friend request uh, so you can catch these lives or anything like that. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Post and let me know if there's any, uh, if you guys have ever done a condemned building or anything like that, that uh, you've had some I guess, horror stories about, you know, maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe there's a, a step, you know, later on that I'm going to, you know, uh, put my foot in or whatever, and it's going to get me in trouble. So uh, if you guys have any helpful hints, by all means, put them in the post. But thanks so much for watching and take it easy.